Hans Christian Ampersen Electrifying Fairy Tales A great while ago, when the world was full of wonders, there lived a voltmeter. It was voltmetering day in and day out, waving its tiny needle. Its life was boring, but not pointless. One day, the voltmeter met a clock. It was equipped with two hands, just like humans, and it moved them in a stately manner. It was love at first sight. Shortly after, the two got married, and out of this marriage, we have an oscilloscope. Here I have a simple analog oscilloscope. In the upper section, we have the clock. Well, kind of. And the lower section is the voltmeter. AC. DC. Proudly protruding male BNC connector. And as a bonus, we have here the second voltmeter. This is two-channel oscilloscope. On the screen, we have a horizontal line representing the time. By adjusting this knob, we can adjust time intervals. The vertical line represents the voltage, the Cartesian plane of time and voltage coordinates. By turning this knob, we can set the voltage value per each square on the screen. Same thing on the second channel. I turn this thing on, and soon we have two horizontal lines on the screen. The channel selector is set to display both channels. I switch it to channel 1, and we have only one timeline. I set the switch to the ground position and move the line to the middle of the screen. Oops, doesn't work. No, I turn it to channel 2. Quick correction. The timeline is set in the center now. Turning the time knob, we can adjust how fast the point in time is swept through the screen. A slow-moving single point indicates that the patient is dead. No heartbeat. A hospital monitor is also a kind of oscilloscope. But this clock cannot tell you the time. It only divides voltage change in time into seconds intervals. To connect the oscilloscope to an electric circuit, we use special sounds. The oscilloscope is so sensitive that we must compensate capacitance introduced by the leads. The leads are shielded to keep interference from external signals away. I connect the sound to channel 1. The selector switch to channel 1. Let's see what happens when we connect a regular battery. Selector switch to DC. We can remove the hook from the sound and touch the measured point directly. We lose the picture. I expect about 1.5 volts, so I set the voltage selector to 1 volt per division. It looks like this battery has less than 1 volt. The line doesn't even touch the first division line. Let's check it with a voltmeter. And sure enough, it is below 1 volt. Now let's see the voltage on the secondary winding of a transformer plugged into a regular electrical outlet. Toggle switch set to AC. Connecting leads. Since the trigger function doesn't work, I catch the still signal manually. And here is AC voltage on the secondary from the transformer. We have a diodes rectifier on this board. Let's see the voltage there. The switch is in DC position. So here it is. AC voltage rectified to DC. 
Even though we are on the plus side, the voltage drops to zero and then rises again. This time I connected a regular bulb, but we still have bumpy ride voltage. A capacitor goes parallel to the bulb. The voltage doesn't drop to zero. The capacitor smoothed out those bumps. Now I connect in series a single diode just behind the secondary of the transformer. The negative voltage values are simply cut off by the diode. Once again I connect the capacitor parallel to the bulb and we can see that the capacitor is discharged lifting up the voltage from the zero level but also lowering the voltage peak value. Now I connect the sounds behind the rectifier and add an inductor in series. The voltage once again doesn't drop to zero. When I bypass the coil, we can see the difference. And now something I use to hypnotize my guests. Two signal generators connected to different channels. The time knob is set into the XY position. This way I will feed one sinusoidal signal horizontally and the second sinusoidal vertically. The intersection of the two signals produces Lisa Zhu patterns. By changing the frequency ratio or simply setting them off the synchronization, we can play for hours. Those cheap generators are far from perfect. Therefore, my figures are kind of boxy. Is it really a sinusoidal signal? Square signal? Triangle? By connecting a simple circuit, we can test voltage-current relationships of elements. An open circuit gives us a horizontal line. When we short the circuit, it gives us a vertical line. A resistor gives us a linear function. Ladies and gentlemen, we can see Ohm's law with our own eyes. Different resistor, different slope. Diode. Capacitor. And here is the testing circuit. A small transformer, resistors R1 and R2 bring down the voltage to about 1 volt. 1 kilo ohm resistor limits the current to about 1 milliampere. X and Y connected to the oscilloscope channels and test leads to connect the tested element. One more thing. If your oscilloscope is out of order, don't take it to a clockmaker. Daddy, who is the clockmaker? Go to sleep, my son. This will be another story.